I'm only going to talk for a couple of minutes because I know you've been here a long time. And um, I, we held a meeting out here um, when we thought that there was it was very close to a decision. And remember in October when everyone thought that was going to be the decision and it wasn't, uh, stayed orange zone. And then it was actually out of the blue for these guys too in November, just unexpected and and no advance warning to anyone. And in fact, the day before the announcement, I was at a cross-party forum uh, with Jerry Brownlee, and I knew that the decision was close, and I said to him, well, one more time, I'm just gonna say this, you know, if the, if the worst comes to the worst, then you've gotta think land swap for these people, they're a whole community, and actually just moving the community, if that's the problem with the land, then you've gotta think about that option. And he never told me that there was going to be an announcement the following day. So um, I'm, I'm not very happy with how this has been conducted. The comment um, Vic made before about the, um, the government's made a decision uh, that you can't stay here, they actually haven't. They've made a cabinet decision um, on a zoning that is just a cabinet decision. So there's no legal designation over the land and they are not compulsorily acquiring your properties. But a voluntary offer that doesn't tell you what happens if you don't accept one of them looks kind of like a compulsory offer to me. But it's couched in a voluntary framework which means that they are not obliged to reimburse you for the market value of your property. And I know John Key came here and he stood in the, well actually outside this hall and he addressed the crowd and he said he understood the eight metre rule, he understood that there were issues around the EQC cover for the land and he would be working with the government to find a way to resolve the problem. They haven't resolved the equity problem, they've hidden it. They've buried it in a voluntary offer that doesn't offer you market value. It offers you registered valuations or um, that, that are used, calculated, purely for setting your rates. And they've been used for an entirely different purpose. And they have backed away from what they promised that they would do. And that was to work out a way to properly compensate you. And, it, and it's because it's framed in a voluntary offer, can I go to court and argue against the government's offer? No, it's a voluntary offer. I can take it or leave it. What happens if I leave it? I don't know. And actually the government hasn't decided that either because they want off the hook on the EQC money for the land. That's why they want people to accept the RV for the land because the EQC valuation, although it might be minimum section size or the eight metre squared formula, um, that's at market value. So for a section my size, I'm 500 square metres. I'm only 50 square metres over the minimum section size in the central city. So actually my market value might be more than my rating valuation. Mm -hmm. But I don't know because they won't tell me what it is. They only tell me that I'll get the difference if I only accept the land offer. Hey, tell me what section I can buy for $87,200 because that's what my section's worth. Oh, and I didn't actually buy there because I couldn't afford to buy better. I, I actually um, bought there because um, I can afford to buy and live where I choose in my electorate. And I'll tell you what, I chose to live in Bexley because I loved it. So, um, you know, and I know that a lot of people in this room feel exactly the same way about Brooklands. So I'm sorry that I'm emotional and angry, but it's because I am. And um, I spent an entire several months saying to myself, I'm not angry, I'm not angry, I'm not angry, I'm just incredibly disappointed. Because it meant that it was much easier for me to cope. But I think it is time that we demand the answers to the questions that we've been asked, which is, why is it that this area cannot be um, remediated to yes. a level that provides an yeah, insurable yeah. Yeah. How much would it cost? What is the cost-benefit um, ratio that they came up with? Are there other options? I want to see what those options are. And then I want to look at um, subdivisions up at, um, in Spencerville and over in Kyanga whatever options are, but let the land be made um, freely available 
um, in order that we can do essentially what's a land swap so that the land um, prices don't restrict you in getting back what you had before. Mm -hmm. Nobody is expecting anyone to be, not to be worse off as a result of the earthquake. We've suffered the worst disaster that the country's ever experienced. Um, and in many respects, how we cope with the recovery is going to be the making of our city. We can build this city back stronger and better than it ever was before. You know, you might remember the earthquake in Sichuan in China. Um, I've just been over in China. They rebuilt the entire province in three years. Same and place. they took they, they took they took each different province in China. Now they do have a kind of communist government and various other things. <laughs> and no insurance <laughs> to deal with. <laughs> But they, they got different provinces to rebuild different parts and they built back better. They built much better community facilities, more schools, more, you know, so they actually built back better. They said, let's take this as an opportunity to take the province forward 20 years. But I'm just worried that we're going to wait 20 years to, you know, sort of decide what it is that we're going to do next. So I think that it is really important that the insurance companies are, um, are held to their obligations under their insurance policies. But the other question I want to ask is, why are we not having that general question around the, um, not preservation of equity, nobody's expecting all of their equity to be, be preserved in Christchurch. It will come back, it'll come back over time, but I mean, people's equity has been affected everywhere. And I'll tell you what, now that I'm in the market for a house, house <laughs> prices have gone up. They've gone up dramatically. And I've talked to a real estate agent who told me that he sold a property for what he believed to be $60,000 more than it was worth um, last weekend. So, uh, you know, this is happening all over the place. We did warn the government that when you put six to 10,000 people in the market at the same time, there is going to be a response. When you increase demand and you don't increase supply, you will get uh, pressure applied to that price and it's up. So I think that we have a right to ask for these questions to be answered. Valuable um, alternative um, properties, that we can um, replace our houses with uh, for those of us who are red zone, but more particularly in Brooklyn's, some serious answers to the questions about the future of Brooklyn's and what alternatives may or may not still be possible um, here or around in surrounding areas. But that's not to hold back people who want to take the money and go, because I think it's really important that those that have got for a variety of reasons, need to be able to take the money and move on. They must be allowed to do that um, in a way that they feel that they are not letting anyone down. They're not. People's priorities are different, and we have to respect them. So I've um, been on a huge learning curve um, since that first um, earthquake, September the fourth. This was the first of my electorate that I came to on that morning. And in fact, I was in the school at 9 o'clock for the first civil defence meeting um, when nobody still did know what was going on. And, um, and so it's been a hell of a journey. But it ain't over yet. But these guys have obviously got a really um, practical knowledge base that they're able to connect you with people. I mean, we have to get quantity surveyors and everything like that. But I thought I'd just frighten my insurance company, so I'm glad to hear your advice. So I said to them, well, we haven't been talking to quantity surveyors over Christmas. We've been talking to lawyers. So I'd like to have a meeting with you about going to court over whether you have the right to repair in the red zone. So they might be talking to me about me. We're <laughs> <laughs> also here to help, and anything that we can do to help, uh, we'll continue to do. Uh, thanks. That's the future mayor of Christchurch. <laughs>